Hi, I'm Linda Hopwood, pastor of Ives Chapel United Methodist Church. This is the second week of Lent. As part of a virtual Bible study, I'm sharing some thoughts that expand on ideas from last Sunday's message about the second statement Jesus made from the cross. Our messages and Bible study are based on Susan Robb's book, Seven Words, Listening to Christ from the Cross. In his first statement, Jesus challenges us to follow his example of forgiving those who hurt us. Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 34, tell us that Jesus is hung on a cross between two criminals after he's been beaten, whipped, and publicly humiliated. After all of this, he asks God to forgive those who hurt him because they do not understand the consequences of their actions. In his prayer, Jesus also is asking God to forgive us. Our words and actions can hurt other people, and when they do, they cause Jesus pain. Jesus' second statement from the cross is part of a conversation that takes place between Jesus and the two criminals as they are all dying. The first criminal joins in with the religious leaders and soldiers who are mocking Jesus. If he is the Messiah, the criminal challenges, shouldn't Jesus be able to rescue all of them from the torturous death they are facing? The second criminal is shocked by the lack of respect he hears in the comments of the first criminal. The two criminals are being punished as they deserve for the crimes they've committed, he says. But Jesus is an innocent man. People are judged by the company they keep. During his lifetime, Jesus seeks out sinners. He eats with tax collectors. He touches and heals lepers. He allows a prostitute to wash his feet with her tears. His association with sinners bothers the religious authorities. Luke tells us that the Pharisees and scribes grumble about how Jesus welcomes sinners and even eats with them. In the time of Jesus, sharing a meal with someone signifies them to be a friend. And because the religious leaders consider these same people to be unclean, they do not understand why Jesus would spend time with them, let alone treat them as friends. And yet, in life and in death, Jesus is being true to the mission statement that Luke records in chapter 19, verse 10, when Jesus says that the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. One of Jesus' final conversations is with a criminal, one who certainly could be considered someone who is lost. He may have lived his life wrongfully, but this man is rethinking the choices he's made. The criminal responds to the mercy and grace Jesus extends to those who are taking his life. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, the criminal says. This man is the only one, Luke records, who calls Jesus by name. Others address him as rabbi, master. 
son of David, and even Lord. But it is a criminal who uses Jesus' name as part of a prayer. In the Old Testament, remember me can mean a plea for help and delivery. In Genesis, God remembers Noah and saves him from the flood. Because God remembers Abraham, God saves Abraham's nephew Lot from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. God delivers the Israelites from slavery in Egypt because God remembers the covenant made with Abraham. Jesus hears the criminal's pleas and replies, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus looks at a dying criminal who has done many things wrong in his life and offers him grace and mercy because the criminal puts his trust in Jesus. This man reaches out to Jesus in faith, and Jesus offers him paradise. In his letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul reminds us that by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Jesus offers the criminal and us another chance. Even though we don't deserve it, God shows us great mercy. Jesus' final words to the thief on the cross are, Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus is dying the same way he lived. Even from the cross, he is seeking to save the lost. How about us? As followers of Jesus, may we too comfort the hurting, the marginalized, and the isolated. May we show them the love Jesus offers all of us. Amen.